Greetings everyone, my name is Simon Doyle and today I'm going to show you how to make an efficient self-powered reactor that is meltdown safe and can be used with any amount of fuel rods and any type of fuel rods. So this is the setup, just so you can see what happens when you put in more fuel rods, let me just put in more fuel rods. completely automated <clears throat> excuse me I just made this lamp uh, use up 4000 kilowatts and as you can see we output more the vision rate is at the lowest setting so it doesn't really consume the fuel rods that much and turbine output is at a set rate so you see I throw it all the way to the left since the uh, two updates they made it so it will be going back up slowly this reactor is temperature controlled uh, and you shouldn't need to touch it um, under normal circumstances on this text display you can see the reactor's temperature in percentages so it's 44 percent that seems about right because this is 70 percent this is 30 percent um, and the fission rate the turbine output and the temperature control is fully automated so let's get down to wiring. So for this reactor you are going to need five divider components, four memory components, a greater than component, a text display but it's optional and I do believe about 16 wires. So let's get to wiring mode. The first, me first memory component should be set Yeah, about that. So the first memory component should be set to 45. This will set your fission rate. So 45 is optimal. I usually use 50, but if you have a sub that is really power hungry and you don't want any outages, uh, push it down to 45 or around 45. Uh, be advised though, this could make your reactor go on fire. Um, so just be careful about it. It should be good around 50. Uh, I never had any good experiences below 45, but since then I've added, added a temperature control uh, into it as well. So I don't know. You could test it. It just works with 45 for me. The second memory component. Uh, where is it? Where is it? There we go. Should be set at 75. The third memory component should be set at 100. Now this 100 is the divider we use because the reactor outputs um, from 0 to 10,000 temperature and we want to use percentage values so we divide it by 100 so now it, so now it outputs uh, from 0 to 100 temperature values so that's why we have this uh, set to 100. The final memory component is just going to be 65 uh, this is the temperature you add in, at what temperature should the uh, reactor shut down, uh, what percentage, just important to know this is percentage, um, should the reactor shut down. Uh, I started at 70 but the reactor caught on fire uh, a bunch of times so I decreased it to 6 to 5. If you still have some issues uh, with it you can lower it to 60. Uh, be warned it will lower the um, temperature of the reactor so you might have some power outages but then again if you put four fuel rods in it um, for example our ship the ship we use the reason I'm making this video is because a friend of mine asked me on our server what kind of wiring I did and he couldn't make heads and tails of it because it wasn't looking like this it was all over the place um, because it was a test setup and uh, yeah so on our ship, the Orca 2, uh, we use um, this setting at 65%. We have four volatile uh, fuel rods in it and we don't seem to lose any power. I don't know why, it just doesn't happen. Like we have three fuel rods at 100% uh, 
value and the first one is at 99% and it just doesn't seem to go down. Uh, I talk to the developers about this or at least I send them a message as a bug report uh, but it doesn't seem to be a bug so far or they haven't come back to me yet. I don't know. Uh, we will soon see. So, the first divider component uh, all right, before I get into any of the divider components, because they are just wired, uh, the greater than component is set so the output is 100 and the false output is 1. This is because this divider component takes in the greater than value, and if the uh, temperature readout that we have is greater than the preset value that we give with this, like 65, then it's going to divide the set fission rate value by 100. So if it was set to, I don't know, 55, then it's going to divide it by 100. So it will pull the fission rate way back down until the temperature goes down. And after that, the greater than component is no longer going to be true. So it will not divide it. It will send out a false output. So it will divide by 1. And we know that everything divided by 1 is the same value itself. So it just makes this divider component like it's non-existent. So, I talked about all the settings, now let's get down to wiring. The memory component signal out should be the signal in for the divider component, and for the first signal in should be the reactor load value out. The signal out should go to the second divider component, the first slot, and to the reactor set turbine output. You can find it over here. So it will set the load, so it will set the turbine output according to the load we have. Now after this divider component, it goes into this one for the first slot, and it will go into the latter one, you can see over here. This is basically just telling us uh, the temperature uh, that we currently have. This will go into the second divider component. Uh, that we'll have the fuel out and we have this memory component that we set to 75 to the second slot We will have the reactor fuel out to the signal in on this divider component and the output is going to be over here So after this one we have all of this Now this divider component takes the temperature out from the reactor and we'll take the memory signal out Remember we set it to 100 so this will make the temperature of the reactor in percentages. Now here you can set up a text display so it will show you what percentage the reactor is at. Now it will go into the greater component signal in and we have the memory component signal out. Remember this is the temperature in percentages and remember this one is the temperature that we set that we want it to shut off. For example this is 65. Now after the signal out we want it to input over here to the final divider component and we take the temperature, the uh, excuse me, the fission rate we have and we take the temperature if it's not greater than and we set it to the fission rate. Now after this one, after you are done with this, you can just go in here, add a single fuel rod, I'm just gonna help it a little bit to speed it up. It will set it manually, but it's slow. Then I'm gonna take some more fuel rods and show you uh, what happens if you add two. You see the temperature is gonna rise. We see it's above 65 and we should have, yep, it's going down because we set the fission rate all the way down to zero and it's coming back up and it's stabilized. It will um, do the same if you have power fluctuations, it will try to follow um, as best as it can. Let me just put in another fuel rod. You will see the fission rate is going back down. And you see it's not as volatile when you have um, not as temperature fluctuative if you have it like this. But you can see since my uh, setup here only has a single lamp, it has too much turbine output. So what I can do is get the mechanic out of the way. And you see we have 45, I can put it down to 50 because we don't use as much power. And you see 
the turbine output needle is going back down and we don't need as much fission rate so we don't use the power cells as well so this one you have to tune to the ship you have now if you put it up to 55 I don't think we will have enough power yep you see you set this needle way too low so it's not in the green areas and remember you only have to set this once so I put it back down to 50 you have to set this once and it will follow whatever uh, load you put on it now this one is not really touchable you shouldn't touch it or you can if you want this one is only a divider so we have the temperature in percentages and this one is only the emergency shutdown when it should set the fission rate all the way back down to close as zero as possible but then again uh, the value you have to remember um, yeah I didn't put any oxygen generators over here but then again you have to remember uh, that even if the value goes above 65 this is not an emergency shutdown uh, I had it I had it wired up first like that but it didn't really work so because the needle that we have on the left side uh, the fission rate needle didn't go back down quick enough because the devs patched it that's why you cannot have two component uh, reactor control anymore so I didn't wire it to the uh, to the shutdown of the reactor because it was shutting down way too many times and the captain didn't like it and I was just the engineer so I didn't dare disagree with the captain so you can set it up that, that if it's greater than it will shut it down but I just made it so the fission rate is like this what's the point why am I talking about this well you have to set the fission rate value the uh, the temperature value that you want it to shut off not too low so your reactor is not really powering up shutting down powering up shutting down powering up shutting down and etc forever uh, but you have to set it so it will shut down so this needle from the right side the fission rate goes all the way back down quick enough before your reactor blows up that is not perfect but under normal circumstances and under no normal loads I didn't have any problems with it and it didn't blow up the only time it came close to blowing up is when people touched the reactor and messed around with these settings or even the wiring and I don't mean looking at it I mean disconnecting it and reconnecting it or touching the fuel rods or rapidly putting in four fuel rods when there was one inside so the fission rate is all the way to the right that's about it I hope it was a little bit educational or maybe it helped you figure it out um, I will try to upload a handmade schematic um, from the uh, for the description of this video uh, I hope it helped and tell me if it works uh, with others with your own sub as well um, it should but just because it should doesn't mean it will thank you for watching and be safe in Borotrauma